This is my water fortress base design hosting a myriad of features for small groups. A spacious enclosed dock for your boats, a fresh and unique feathered roof design that gives a bunch of defensive mobility, options for having external TCs as well as going without them if you don't need it, open air access directly to the roof from the shooting floor as well as a bedroom on the roof with a waterfall that slides down into a front lower roof, and a mini copter landing pad that drives directly into your shooting floor that utilizes a compact garage design so that it doesn't impact the footprint as much, and a whole bunch of other features that we'll be going over in a base tour at the end of the video. This base can be built in the ocean as well as rivers if you find a flat enough location, and potentially even in the new lakes that will be coming soon. For this tutorial, we're going to be building out in the ocean. The first foundation should be placed out far enough to where you're not swimming and you're able to jump while on top of it, and then you'll build off one square to the side. Facing towards the land, we're going to build five raised triangles, and then we'll head back underwater and place two more squares with three triangles in the front of them. On the final triangle is where your garage door will go, as well as two shop fronts on either side, and then the rest can be placed down with full walls. This is a preliminary check that you'll want to make sure you get down pat before building the actual starter base. To do that, we're going to build a 2x3 with triangles on the side of it to make sort of an egg shape, and then three triangles on the end of that, and this 1x1 one one here will be your starter base. You don't have to upgrade anything besides this at this point if you're struggling for resources, and you can expand this out into a 2x1 to help you get started. The reason we're building everything else first is so that we can make sure that it's all good before upgrading it so that we don't bump our head on the ceiling when we're driving our boats into our dock. Don't forget to upgrade the foundations that are underwater, and for from here, we'll expand the rest of the 2x3 with doors on either side in the center. On the other side of our TC, we'll turn this into a loot room as well as space to put more deployables down. And don't forget there's a base tour at the end of the video where I'm going to showcase how I put all the deployables inside of this design. Out in the front of the base facing the land, we're going to build jump ups on these triangles here, which is how we'll access our second floor. I prefer to use the triangle roof tiles as my jump ups, but you can do it the old fashioned way if you'd like. Above these openings, we're going to place our jump up airlocks, and you'll notice I put a ceiling tile on top of it. You're going to want to not do that because that's how we'll get to our shooting floor. Heading over to the ocean front side, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we'll have two doorways going into our boat dock. And from here, we'll build the exact same jump up airlocks. If you'd rather repurpose the triangles where these jump ups are located, feel free to do so. I just would recommend having one on either side of the base. At this point, it's very important for us to set an airlock up in the front of the base, if not having done so sooner. And I'm using shop fronts here so I can have a ton of visibility. Back at our dock, we're going to place down two squares and upgrade them to sheet metal and surround them with half walls and then seal them off on the top. And above that, we'll have two waterfront windows that we can guard the ocean with. The sheet metal squares that we built will be a loot room on the inside of the base that you can use as depot storage after returning from a boat run. And from here, we're going to finish off the dock and seal it in with shop fronts on either side, seal tiles and a garage door. On the front of the base facing the land, you have the option to put two vending machines here, otherwise you can switch it out for windows like we have on the other side of the base. If you put vending machines here, you're going to want to upgrade everything around it to sheet metal. Next, we're going to finish off these sides of the base with honeycomb, and the way that I like to do this is by building it in stone with sheet metal on the inside of it so I can upgrade it once I get more metal frags. And to save on some resources, we're not going to honeycomb the second floor, but if you plan on doing anything special with it, you should. But in our case, there's nothing important up here, so we'll use this as an opportunity to get some power on either side of the base with solar panels and use door frames to support our third floor. And at some point before you get too crazy with your deployables, you want to upgrade the entire core to sheet metal or armored if you're able to do so. And if you don't yet have a garage door learned yet, now would be a good time to go get that done because we're gonna have to start taking these double doors off to access our third floor. And I made an oopsie while recording this and accidentally sealed all of these off, so I told you earlier not to place those triangles down above the jump ups. If you weren't listening earlier and did this, I'm sorry. Everybody always complains about me doing shit like this, but I'm stupid, uh, sorry. If you do have four jump ups like I'm doing here, you have the opportunity to create two completely sealed off bedrooms, but this is going to alter the way that our feathered roof design works a little bit. But having these bedrooms like this confuses raiders, is great for base defense, and is also very close to a route to get outside very quickly. And if you're doing anything on the second floor, I would recommend sectioning it off so that it confuses raiders even more and misleads them from these bedrooms. And we're going to set one of these up on the other side of the base as well. From here, we can set up the double door frame supports for our mini copter landing pad. And I would recommend upgrading the floor tiles to sheet metal so they don't get soft sided. And then seal the remaining jump ups with some airlocks. The ceiling tiles can go on these ones. 
Next, we'll be placing three triangles off of the door frames on both sides of the base, and these should be upgraded to sheet metal whenever you can do so. At this point, our base is pretty strong with some solid roof access, so we're gonna head over to the front and build an enclosure for an oil refinery. We'll put two single doors on either side of the square foundation connected to our front airlock, and then we'll seal the rest of these triangles in, upgrade everything to sheet metal, and make sure we place our oil refinery rotated to the right. This way, we can place a storage adapter on it facing us. Outside of this enclosure, we're gonna place two triangle foundations down with two windows facing the land and seal off the roof as well as put a double door frame down. And this will be used as a form of a secondary roof as well as drop down from our waterfall. Now we're done with everything on the ground besides our wide angle peaks that also form our feathered roof. This is a very similar design to my 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three shooting floor, except the side facing the land has one less triangle on the left that you can see there. And per usual, you can connect it to the base like so, so you don't need external TCs, but if you do want them in the future, you can leave the outer triangle as wood and disconnect it from the base, but it will extend the range of the building privilege by one square foundation if you're doing it this way. Maybe two foundations, I didn't test it. Also remember these squares are placed on the base after the triangles which are placed on the door frames. Now here we're working on the rest of our mini landing pad and I like to put down some quarter walls there to give us a little bit of protection from the ground. To connect this to our third floor, we're gonna place a door frame as well as a shop front and close it off on both sides. Then you're gonna repeat the same thing we did on the other side so that we can finish off the third floor. And we'll be placing a half wall down followed by a bunch of roof tiles. All of them will be square roof tiles, except for the center one, which now has to be a triangle because of our bedrooms, which is going to cause some problems. So don't place that one down just yet. It's not too big of a deal, but I found a better way later on in the video to replace that triangle. Next, we're going to invert these roof tiles and place them on top of the other roof tiles. And this will allow us to create this very nice feathered design here. And if you did not know, yes, the roof tiles do have sockets on the top of them that you can build on. On the front side of the base, we're going to build four triangle roofs facing inwards, which is gonna give us this sort of helmet shape here. And then on the interior, we're going to place two double door frames here, as well as two roof tiles pointing inwards towards those door frames with a floor tile on top, and then four triangles facing inwards, as you can see here. Down in the center is where our jump up will be at, and you're gonna to wanna to put it on the front side of the base so that it's not blocking our mini copter garage. On either side of the front of the base, there's this single roof tile here where you can place another triangle on top of it. Do that on both sides. And then coming back into the center of the roof, you'll place two door frames on either side so we can place these square tiles down with four triangles on both sides. And this is where our roof bedroom will go. This is just a square roof facing inwards with two walls on both sides and then two shop fronts further in. On the back side, we'll place down two triangle roofs which will connect in the center with another triangle roof facing out from the bedroom. This is where you can build up for your wind turbine and you can go quite high. Keep in mind we are at sea level and we can only build so high up so you might not get the full 150 power out of this which is why we're gonna have another one in the front of the base later on. And here you can see I figured out a better way to seal off this area by placing a half wall with a square roof tile on top of it, and that gives us a little bit more coverage. Next, we're gonna be finishing off the roof tiles above the oil refinery. And to do so, we're going to place one triangle, one square, and one triangle facing inwards, and then two triangles, one square, and two more triangles facing outwards, with two door frames in the center so that we can build out this little floor plan here. From those door frames, you can build up for your second wind turbine, and for aesthetics, I like to place it lower than the other one. And if you choose to do so, you can build out some more floor tiles on there to give yourself a little more room. And then from here we are done with the base design besides upgrading it and I'm choosing to go without a compound wall because I find it limits mobility during online raids and we're also too deep in the water to fully seal ourselves in with walls. So we'll put these two in the front to protect us when we're leaving our base and these two in the back over here to protect us when we're exiting our boat dock. And this is the completed build for the water fortress. Let's head over to the base tour. From the front, you can see we've got aggressive roof angles as well as windows with a little cheeky turret there. Direct access to the windows as well as the front entrance to our base on the other side. An oil refinery right here that we can connect up to an industrial system to provide low grade for all of our vehicles. Visibility on our interior airlock, which heads into our jump ups to our second floor and then our core in the center here with a loot room on this side and our TC over here with tons of storage. Over in the back is where we'll find our dock as well as depot storage above it. In the center hallway and our core is where we can place down weapon racks for tools as well as locker rekits. The second floor is up to you how you would like to design it. Our vending machines are off to the right and it's very nice to have these for resources because by the ocean you might not be able to farm as much as you'd like. Up on the third floor we have a very unique roof with direct access to our mini copter garage as well as the landing pad. This jump up brings us up to the roof itself where you can see we have 
tons and tons of angles. And if we head up a little bit further over here, we can find our bedroom up on the top. And if you wanted to seal this in with a doorway instead of using traps, you can just remove the roof tile that we're standing on. This could be repurposed into something else as well because you do have a pretty good angle to hide behind this roof tile right here. And if you jump above the bedroom, you'll find the waterfall, which goes down onto our forward facing roof, which itself also has tons of angles, places for traps, places to hide, as well as space for personal customizations. And if we jump back out down, that's how you get onto the ground from your roof. And don't forget one of the coolest features is that there's no windows on our shooting floor because of our wide angle peaks in the floor itself, as well as the front over here with quarter walls. If you choose to do external TCs, it's as simple as what you see in front of you. I have a whole playlist on external TCs if you want to learn more about them. In the case of this base, it doesn't provide much upkeep reduction unless you plan on expanding them into flank towers, but they will prevent you from getting griefed. Don't forget to get shotgun traps and auto turrets down in key locations such as your boat dock on the backside, and some other good spots are on the shooting floor foundations on these sides of the base. This is one of the most unique bases I've put out to date, featuring a unique feathered roof design. But that's all I got for you guys today. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a dislike if you didn't, and I'll catch you in the next one.